going to ask Gary Allen and Kathy Krause to come as they're going to share with us a mission moment to all of us. Good morning. I want to make this a little higher for me. I'm Kathy Krause. I've been a member here since 1991. Um, I want to go back in time just a little bit. First of all, uh, Daniel asked me a few months ago if I would consider being uh, the Ad Council chairperson. And I agreed um, because I felt like I could make a difference. Um, I grew up in United Methodist Church my whole life. We went to Mount Rainier and United Methodist Church. Um, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents, we all attended the same church. And it was a lot like St. Matthew's. We, the pews were full, the balcony was full with the youth. We had a wonderful choir. Um, and it was like that for a long time. I was confirmed there. You know, there were weddings there. And as time went on, the numbers started to dwindle and the choir got a little smaller and the youth went away to college. And, and that went on for a few years, and then suddenly it's, you know, the, the pews are half empty. And the church was still doing the same things. The youth group was smaller, but still doing everything. The missions were smaller, but still doing it. And ultimately, um, fast forward a few years, the church um, is now a historic landmark in Prince George's County. If you'd love to go see it, it's a beautiful building. Um, but the church didn't survive and they closed. Um, I don't want to go through that again. And I've been here long enough to see that what's happening here at St. Matthew's is very similar to what happened at Mount Rainier United Methodist Church. Um, and I really don't want to go through another church closure. It's painful. Um, it's hard to watch. And... You just, it's just gone. It's amazing. It's like losing a life. It's just gone. Um, so here at St. Matthew's, my three kids were baptized here. They were confirmed here. They want to get married here. Um, and I'd like to be able to, to see that happen, um, especially when our kids come to church, right? So many decide not to and, and don't. So St. Matthew's is going to have to make some changes, going to have to make some tough choices, um, but we're a family. I consider all of you my family, and generally families work together for the best. We want what's best for everybody, right? And, and we take care of our family first before we can take care of the rest of the world. And I know um, St. Matthew's is doing a lot for other people, um, but I think it's time we did a lot for ourselves, because if we don't take care of ourselves, we're not going to be around to take care of anybody else. So um, I hope in the weeks and months to come that with transparency and uh, a lot of work and a lot of prayer, that we will be able to walk this new road of change together and embrace, embrace the new, embrace the change, it might be a little gray for a while, but um, I, I have every faith in this church that um, we're going to come out on top. So that's it. And I've made it all these years without ever having to come up here and speak. <laughs> Good morning. It's pretty clear that what we were is not what we are today. So it's time to begin to think about the future. As we think about the future, I want to talk about the insert that's in your bulletin this morning. Please take a look at it. This is, I'm not going to ask you to read it as I speak in the next couple of minutes, but I want you to take it home with you. I want you to reflect on it. Because it represents some actions that we have taken, 
have taken and that actions we will be taking, particularly over the next several years, in order to embrace whether or not we can get well. In one sense, everything I was going to say, I could just say and turn to Daniel and say ditto. But what I want to talk about is two different strategies we're going to be pursuing over the next three years. One of them, we've already decided to embrace in detail. And that is to take a look at the commitments that were made more than 15 years ago by this church in financing this beautiful building and to look at how we might reduce the debt that that building has continued to provide in our budget each month. And so people will call on you and ask you to step forward and embrace how we might deal with that the burden it represents on our vision, our planning, and our work in the future. It's not going to go away. But that's just one strategy. The second strategy will be to look at our program and budget. We just approved a budget. The Administrative Council earlier this month approved a reduced budget for 2019. And we're looking at other issues that will face us in the years beyond. But what we're really going to have to look at, if we stop to think about it, is not merely just where we stand currently in finance, but we're going to have to look at our shared activities and how we can set a clearer set of priorities in the future for mission and outreach and finance and asset management. Because clearly, if we want to change, we want to do so in a thoughtful and prayerful manner. And that means we want to consult as broadly as possible with the members of the congregation. We need your input into this process because we want to build not only on the commitments that we've shared, but ultimately the commitments that we want to continue and to want to make in the future. It means ultimately putting first things first. And that means that we're going to have to really decide who we are as a church in this community in 2019. What does it mean to be a United Methodist Church in Bowie, Maryland in the next several years? How can we embrace the changes that have occurred here and look to the future to continue to be a loving community of service in this area? Now that means that we're going to have to look at, look that next slide, a process of discernment. Because that means we're going to have to look at trying to uncover what our really core values are as a congregation. Daniel's spoken to some of those this morning. We're frequently, human beings are held back by our fears of the future and the unknown and the changes that we're always concerned about embracing. This is our chance. Over these next several years, not merely the next several months, but the next several years, to really look hard at how we can embrace the future in light of all the challenges this church, the United Methodist Church, and frankly Christianity itself faces in the world today. In order to facilitate that process, the Administrative Council will be holding each quarter a series of town hall type meetings which will provide you the opportunity to share with us your concerns and to speak about what are the things that motivate you, that, motiv that engage you, that call forth your commitment to this congregation. I know you value as I do the strengths of this community. I think on reflection you can appreciate the challenges that we face as a Christian community. We can, as Daniel pointed out, trust in God. We can build on our trust with each other. We can navigate our differences and value the perspectives we bring to these challenges. Because in the final analysis, I'm convinced that if we really want to change, if we want things to stay as they are, we're going to have to change. We're going to have to want to get well. Thank you.